Welcome to this presentation on LED system design, part of Osram Opto Semiconductors LED 101 series. To discuss the design challenges of LED systems, we look at the individual system components. A basic LED system consists of an LED, potentially an LED optic, a thermal system, and an LED driver. There are many LEDs to choose from. This page shows how a decision about LED type and number of LEDs per system can be approached. In this example, we decide on the LED type by knowing the overall lumens, the maximum ambient temperature, and the available package space. Looking at the light characteristics, the required system life, and the space available for a heatsink, we can define the current per LED. The light output per LED can then be estimated. Accounting for optical losses, required lumens and production distribution of the LEDs, the necessary amount of LEDs can be determined. A crucial step during the design is to build some hardware, like a subsystem to verify the estimates and to check on the temperature behavior of the system. Finally, the driver design and the LED arrangement, LEDs in series or in parallel, can be optimized. Color temperature and color rendering are also important considerations when selecting an LED. Besides customer input, the latest ENERGY STAR requirements can provide guidance. The information listed here is from the ENERGY STAR requirements, which will become effective on October 1, 2011. After satisfying the light quality requirements, the emphasis lays on wall plug efficiency, light engine life, and cost. Providing a more efficient heat sink or running the LED at a lower current reduces the LED junction temperature and thus increases the life of the LED, a valuable design option if lifetime is an issue. Doubling the LED current often gives you less than twice the LED light output. A higher LED current also requires a larger forward voltage. The effect is a reduction in efficacy, or lumens per watt. We show here an Osram Oslon 4000K white LED as an example. The efficacy in this example of 85 lumens per watt at 350 milliamps goes down to 67 lumens per watt at 700 milliamps. Using more LEDs increases the cost but reduces the electric bill. LED optics are used to shape the beam to fulfill system requirements. Optics can be primary lenses mounted directly on the LED or secondary optics placed above the LED package. Reflectors and Total Internal Reflection, or TIR, optics are popular choices for beam shaping due to their high efficiencies, often around 85%. The choice between reflectors and TIR optics depends upon the application goals. A large number of secondary optics are available as stock items from various optics manufacturers. Historically, these optics typically create circular beam patterns of differing half angles. However, the latest offerings include optics for such specialized applications as equal illuminance areas and street light beam patterns. Osram Opto's LED Light for You partners stock many optics for high power SSL LEDs. They can also design and manufacture custom optics. When a non-standard or specialized light distribution is required, a custom optic may be the only choice. Osram Opto can support concept development, while our LED Light for You partners can design and manufacture the final optics. The thermal system consists of some or all of the following. The LED mounted on a printed circuit board, a thermal interface layer, and a heatsink. 
A thermal system can be compared to an electric circuit where the heat flux corresponds to the electric current, the thermal resistance corresponds to the electrical resistance, and the temperature above ambient to the electric voltage. The thermal resistance of the system is then simply obtained by adding the individual values. The LED junction temperature above ambient is calculated by multiplying the total thermal resistance with the produced heat power. With today's highly efficient LEDs, the heat power is not simply the electrical power applied to the LED, but the electrical power minus the generated light flux. There are various choices of PCB materials which differ in their thermal performance and price. Here we compare a one square inch board carrying an LED producing one watt of heat. Though the thermal resistance of the metal core board is lower, the 10 degrees Celsius temperature increase for an inexpensive FR4 with filled vias might be acceptable in many designs. For lamp applications where LEDs are placed close together, and a lifetime of 50,000 hours or more is expected, a metal core board is the better choice. The mechanical surfaces of the PCB and the heat sink are not polished, which results in many air pockets between the surfaces. As air is a bad heat conductor, the air pockets increase the thermal resistance of the interface. Interface materials like thermal grease or tape are commonly used to fill the pockets. However, for a small thermal contact area, the thermal resistance can become quite large even if these interface materials are used. The heat sink dissipates heat to an outside medium like air. This convection process significantly influences the thermal performance of a heat sink. Convection increases with the temperature difference. Thus, the thermal resistance of a heat sink goes down for a higher heat flux. The heat exchange also increases with the speed of the airflow. Airflow could be provided by the environment, a fan, or simply by the local heating of the air around the, the heat sink fins. That makes the performance of heat sinks orientation dependent. As shown in the example, the heat sink surface temperature at the PCB can be 20 degrees Celsius higher when it's positioned LED down compared to the shown orientation. Heat sinks come in various shapes and dimensions. Some important heat sink parameters are listed here. Web pages of heat sink suppliers offer tools to optimize the heat sink for an application. Though a popular material, steel has a thermal conductivity of only 10% of aluminum or 30% of iron. Thus, steel of more than a few millimeters thickness within the thermal path might add an unnecessary temperature increase to the system. The complexity of PCBs can lead to extensive thermal simulation. Unknowns in the airflow add to error in the results. A thermal imager can make a quick survey of the real temperatures within seconds. It reveals the temperature of PCB hotspots like LEDs and other components. Osram Opto offers thermal imaging as a customer service. In this picture, the insert to the right shows the steep temperature gradients across the PCB epoxy material. This means that the onboard temperature measuring devices need to be placed as close as possible to the heat sources. Finally, we will discuss LED drivers. Since LED drivers affect system efficiency, Energy Star defines basic limits like efficiency and power factor correction. LEDs are driven by constant current supplies. Many companies offer solutions on the chip level. A lamp requires an AC to DC system able to pass UL standards and possibly Energy Star standards. Also, the life of the driver should match the life of the LEDs. These requirements make the driver design challenging and often require working directly with chip suppliers and integrators. 
As the LED current to light output relationship might not be linear, and LED control is difficult at low current levels, dimming is best done with pulse width modulation, or PWM. PWM means that the LED is supplied with a fixed current, but the current is switched off and on. The duty cycle then defines, in a linear way, the light output. The PWM frequency has to be at least a few hundred hertz to avoid noticeable light flicker. The LED light output decreases with temperature and age. A feedback loop can compensate for these changes. The system shown here uses an LED driver whose output current is pulse width modulated according to the microcontroller PWM signal. A photodiode measures a fixed portion of the LED light output, enabling the controller to adjust the PWM duty cycle. The NTC temperature sensor acts as an over-temperature protection for the LED. The insert shows a typical LED driver demo board, courtesy of National Semiconductor. Many constant current sources are switching power supplies. This results in changing loads and duty cycle dependent loads for circuit components. Web pages from driver chip suppliers can help to optimize the efficiency of your system and recommend electronic components with suitable spec limits. As we have seen, the efficacy of an LED lamp system depends upon the component efficiencies. Therefore, all components need to be optimized the LEDs themselves, the LED drive current, the secondary optics, the driver design, and the heat sink. Only then are high lumen per watt values achievable. Thank you for viewing this presentation by Osram Opto Semiconductors.